It's the kind of weekend where you look back and you say, all right, the premiership has already started. How did my team play? How did they fail? Who won? Who didn't win? How did the results uh, go? But it's also such an important day because now it marks what six years uh, since the sad passing away, the murder of Senzo Beiwa. And to the family, our thoughts are with them. Now, as the investigations do begin, there will be court appearances of those that have been nabbed, but... Will justice be served in the end? That's the big question, uh, but we're going to be taking all of your comments. We are interactive, as always, right here on the Marawa Moments. Uh, a big, big time for us because we also got to get a perspective from an African point of view. The famous Mamadou Gay will be joining us later on on this show. You've heard him on various platforms. I don't even know if you're going to have a, a CAF president by the end of the year. What's going on? That's a big, big talking story as well that uh, is there. But hey, this man, Njoman is here. Benson Nshongo. Good to see you, Dad. So, uh, All right. I'm okay. We are coach. Where's that match? Where's Benson? I'm coaching in Pumalanga Vorokom League, yeah. Bombela City Lads. We've got young boys starting from age 22 until age 15. And they all go to school. But how are you balancing that? I know it's been a difficult year with COVID and everything else, but how are you balancing having to coach that age group and schooling and trying to get the best out of them? We're not looking for results. We're looking to develop and teach them how to play football and how we train in the professional league and what to do and what to avoid. So they need school, which is our first priority, and then just basics of football. Would you say they are good, brilliant, or getting there? <laughs> They've improved. Yeah. They love them now in, in Bumalang. At first, they were making too many mistakes, but now I'm proud of them. I mean, do, are we likely to get a resurgence, not necessarily of the name, but of a Mpumalanga Black Aces type of team that would emerge there? I mean, from what you see with the talent that's around, what, what are you reading? There's still politics and pride. Uh, I went to coach TS Sporting. Mm -hmm. I was number one, and then they brought in a, a coach to assist me, and I left. I said, no, we can't have two systems. I've taught them something. I cannot change it. Uh, I'm sorry to say that, but those are proud people. They still believe how they didn't give them enough chance back then. Right. They were supposed to play in the top flight against Omo Chomoson. So they're still bitter to prove that. So oh. that's why we had them Bombera relegated because of the management and the, and the chairman was interfering in coaching mm. because they want to prove to us that they know football. It's been a hard year for me because to accept me, it took them a while. Huh? But they're getting there because they can see that I'm more cooperating their young boys. Only a few Gauteng players, which are three, mm. just to come and impart some knowledge because in Gauteng there's too many competition and our boys are ahead of them. But that is crazy, though, and we hear so much about uh, club chairman interfering with coaching. You're a former player, you're a coach, you know more. So why'd they bother even hiring you in the first place if they think that they know better and if they think they can come through and interfere? You don't go into the offices and knock there and say, OK, go strike that deal, uh, send that money there. You don't tell them that. So why hire you as a coach if they're going to be telling you what to do? I don't think they understand investment. Uh, they feel like we are employees and they must tell us what to do. And in football, it's, it's, it's all about giving back to, to the young boys, giving back to the community. So they are crying for the, what they are spending, so they feel they are entitled to have their own opinion. But how does that make you feel, though? Because you, Benson Mklongo, you're the person that is respected. You're the person that is known as a motivator, one of the greatest captains that we've seen in the country for the biggest team as well, one of the oldest teams in the premiership. Who has the audacity to even tell you that? And how do you even settle something like that? Or you just choose to walk away? I, I, I feel they have to be taught. Yeah. And if not, me who's going to do it? So slowly but surely, I'm trying to teach them how it works overseas. Overseas, you've got a technical director and you've got a CEO of the club, which is voted by the community. 
So the CEO is the one that uh, hires the technical director mm -hmm. and the coach. He knows them, interviews them. So I'm trying to teach them to say, before you even hire a coach, make your due diligence and find out what mm. type of football is he playing. If he's not in line with you, don't hire him at the first place. So they just hire because someone recommended you. Mm. They don't go personal interview you and understand you how you want to do your things. That is, that is incredible. I, I mentioned earlier, and it will be wrong of me not to share this moment and allow you to share the moment as well, because a major development happened today. Senzo Mayu was somebody that you would have been pretty close to your time at Orlando Pirates a number of years. Just remind us of the time that you guys would have been able to share the same space. When, when I joined uh, Orlando Pirates 2008, we went and played... Uh, Charity Cup in Northwest, Mafike. Mm. So we won, we won that cup and they were celebrating. So I was surprised to say, are you really celebrating for a preseason tournament? Because I was from Sundowns. Yeah. So my mind was Africa because I didn't win a star with Sundowns. Mm. My mind is to play a club champions uh, uh, competition. Mm. So with the local league is for us to win the league and go to Kef. So I was surprised to say, w when you celebrate for nothing, What's going to happen when we start the league? So Senzo came to me and said, put our Perasakal win the cup. It's been long. Mm. Allow us to, to celebrate. Mm. And we asked for a t-shirt they gave us. And he said to me, I promise you I'm going to work hard and I'm going to be number one. Remember, Senzo was number one under 23. Kuna was the second. Yes. So he said, I'm going back. And he did it. Wow. And that is massive, though, because a lot of people forget that little bit of history to say, when the two were put together at junior national team level, Meiwa yes. was number one. Yes. Kune was number two. Yes. And how important was that? Because that rivalry would obviously escalate into a Bafana Bafana setup. Yes. Obviously, with the two of them now, one Orlando Pirates, when one kinds of chiefs. Mm. Too much. It, it, it must teach us as, as coaches, club owners, you say, a player without game time cannot improve. Mm. Kuna started first playing the PSL. That's why he was ahead of Senzo. When Senzo got his chance and he got games under his belt, he improved. So we like quick fix. That's why even uh, in the national team, I say, if we cannot have our best right back, we have to think hard to, to select. Are we really there or are we just dreaming? I think we're not in the right space to even say we can compete internationally because we cannot even name our best 11 without hesitation. We always say, but that one is better than this one. Right. And his passing away, I mean, I, I'll always remember where I was when you heard the news then. And I remember it was a Sunday and the phone started probably buzzing at about seven o'clock, half past seven, eight o'clock. Then, you know, people trying to inquire and find out, is it true? Where were you and how did you receive the news and how did it hit you till today? I was in, Puma, uh, in, in Limpopo, I was playing for Pulwana City. Mm. So it was Sunday, our recovery day. And, and the coach was, um, Big yeah. by the time. So at around seven, a uh, coach at the phoned me mm. and said, Pensing, did you hear? I said, What? Are you watching TV? I said, Yes. Says, Says there's no more. I said, You're joking. He says, I'm serious. Mm. Then I phoned my cousin in his preview to go and check, and he confirmed it. That says there's no more. Mm. But for him to be short, it's just a jolly person that doesn't fight. So it, it, it really hit hard to say why only good people are living. By that time, the legends were living one by one, even musicians. Mm. So maybe it's true that I don't know, because only good people are, are passing away now each and every month. And, and I can tell the emotional side that it still holds with you. I mean, you talked about to Debo Komoloi and having given him a call. And he actually tweeted earlier this afternoon at about uh, four minutes to four uh, with the picture of Augusto Palacios um, and Sanzo 
young as he was at the time. Um, and all that Debo Komlo said was that gone but not forgotten. My under 17 to under 19 goalkeeper, best out, out of our development program, won a lot of development tournaments with this young man. May his soul rest in peace. Uh, thank you, Professor Augusto Palacios, for affording all of us this amazing human being. And I mean, what a, what a beautiful moment, well captured. I mean, when in Tlizio, man, you had a heart of gold. So you would have been closer. I got the tail end. All I know is that when we were at the stadium, including that last game, Vimba, crazy game, but he played probably one of his best games ever. In all of that, when the team comes out, the tunnel, he would always come and greet. When the team has won or lost, whatever it is, the emotion it is, he'll contain himself, he'll do what he'll come, and he'll greet. In Tlonipo, that is amazing to see, given the stature that he was starting to command. So that will always be my lasting memory and impression of him. And I don't know, for you, there will be multiple moments that you would imagine that you had with him. Ish. You know, when Munib was our first choice, Yeah. after he made a mistake, uh, Orlando Stadium, where the boy slept and he was crying while the game was on, I said to him, you're not our number one, you're not getting game time, but there's no dull moment. Mm -hmm. You always support and encourage us. Mm -hmm. Without you, there's no healthy atmosphere. He said to me, just to be here and wear these chairs, it means a lot for me. My time will come. Mm -hmm. He lost a twin, by the way, yes. at the sea. Yes. So he says, I'm going to live my life the best ability that I can, and he did that. Do, do you find it strange somehow that South Africa is a very vocal country? South Africa is a country where people are like, hey man, let's go fight for a certain cause. Yeah. That you, you don't find, whether it's Bafana Bafana or the club itself, uh, who'll be like, you know what, let's go fight for the justice. Let's go, I'm a black card, you know, because we want to find out what happened to our brother. We want to find out what happened to our son. You know, you don't find that level of involvement. To I, hey, Asas. I'm going to be sorry to say this, but it's the truth. The day he passed on and we asked for the league to, to be stopped, thanks to the chairman, the league was stopped. Mm. So on Friday, I wanted to drive through to Devon so that I can be there early. Mm. But my, my own team pulled one seat made me play a game I on that day, a friendly match. W you wanted to be at the funeral at, at King's Park Stadium? I wanted to drive on, 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 on Friday morning yes. so I can, I can be there and Devon sleep yeah. off. They made me play in the morning and they made me play a second game, 12 o'clock, and I asked why. They said, we need you more here. Yeah. I said, uh, do you treat us like dogs? One of our own is being murdered. Why, why can't you allow us to support each other? Why do you divide us? So there is, there is, they make sure that they intimidate us not to talk what's happening wrong. Mm -hmm. If you talk, uh, you won't get a club. As you know, the board of directors are owners of the club. Mm -hmm. If you mess up on one club, they'll, they'll just close the doors for mm -hmm. you. And there's nothing we can do. Our union is quiet since it was getting grant. Mm -hmm. You phone them and ask them what's happening. Nothing's been said. I phoned the union what's happening with Vets players. They said they will come back to me. I asked them what's happening to TTM. Mm -hmm. They said they'll come back to me. I asked them what's happening to Highlands Park. They'll come back to me. So we, we, we are divided as black people, I'm sorry to say. So this, this union, they shut them up by giving them money. Because as I said this on the radio show. And that is where uh, Shabalal I was so disappointed. wanted to, uh, lost his mind. I phoned him. I said, yeah. oh, how can you do that to the only person that fights for our rights? You, yeah. you are the only journalist that fights for our rights. The formation of this union was made and it was signed on that show. Where was he? He was playing, probably didn't even know how to spell the word union. Yes. Right? And has the audacity when I am telling him factually that I believe and I'll even say it on camera, that I believe that the players' union, since they got money from the league, have become sheepish. They've become 
like lambs to the slaughter. They become extremely useless. And they're not there to fight for the rights of the players anymore. They're there to fight for their rights, their rights to travel and live a wonderful life. That is what I said then, and that is what I'm repeating even right now. And on any given day that any of them would want to challenge, Abez, there is a chair. It's right here. And it's open. And it's a sad, sad indictment for the many people that fought for the formation of that union. It is. It is, sir. You know. But what's the solution, though, Benson? Because you're a leader. You're, you're a captain. You're somebody who's been able to motivate so much out of people. And yet there's so many people that buy fail and jizol. And they think they have arrived. And they think that they have all the answers to, for the game. I wish I can get a moment to sit down with the Minister of Sport, Mr. Natum Tato. I've mm. tried with Mr. Mbalula uh, to tell him what's happening in our industry. Yeah. As much as Caspar, what they are doing to Caspar, they are also doing to us at home. We don't have a home. Mm. The truth, people don't want to hear the truth. They only judge us when they say we have nothing, we've lost money. Mm. But what hobos money? You're hobos and you're yeah. drinking and you've yes. got nothing. What money is that? Because they can't even mention our salaries. Hmm. Why can't they mention our salaries? Because what they pay us is not what we're worth. I said to Tiko was the first player to come out and, and get what you're worth. Mm. Why don't, can't they say our salaries so that people know what we do with our money? And as, as, as working, we have our family to look after. We've got our mothers, mm. we've got our sisters, our aunt, our young children, because I'm the one that's working. We have to support and take them to school. Jabu Pulo only fought to, to buy a house for her mother, mm. but he never got an increase. And when he talks, he's dawa. So people don't want to listen. If they can just listen to the cries, then they'll understand what's happening behind the closed doors. But they can tell you how much any player in Serie A league and English yes. Premiership, German Bundesliga, they'll tell you now. Today they'll actually Google and they'll tell you how much they've been earning for the past 10, 15, 20 years. They will tell you how much they were worth. They will tell you how much the current coach of Arsenal uh, was bought to uh, Everton for back yes. in those days together with Tim Cahill, how much they were worth at the time. They'll tell you it was a four million uh, you know, pound deal that it was. Uh, but Arteta, who, who is now the coach, he will tell you exactly how much he earns as a coach and everybody else. But in South Africa, like you say, and that is why when the revelations came through that there were still players in the Premiership that were earning 1,000 rand a month, people said, Tamba, man. You, you know my story of Nyundu, earning 5,000. And that was actually my money trying to say, I want people to see him. He, they know him now from the rural areas. Mm. I just wanted people to see that there's talent in Pumalang. People say, why, why I'm so attached in Pumalang? Uh, uh, Mabuya comes from Mombela right. United. The late changes come from Mombela United. Stay playing for Amazu comes from Mombela United. We neglect rural areas, so I feel I have to go there and try to help them. Mm. Football is all about preparation and preparation and reputation to become whatever mm. your God assigned you. Talent needs polishing and needs uh, preparation. So without proper training, you cannot be the best. That's the difference between professional and amateur, is the training method. I, I want to go away from this topic slightly, but I also, you will tell me if I'm being too inquisitive. By the time you retired, what would you say was the highest you earned as a football player? 60,000. Six zero. A month. Sure. And after such a long career. And so small team paid me that 60,000. Not even Sundowns paid me that. So where were you earning that? Pulwa is it. Yeah, PLK. That's one of my highest when yeah. I was about to retire. But didn't you find that to be strange? I love football too much. I didn't care about money. If I need to make extra cash, I do my old cars and sell them. So I, I just love football. That's why I'm in Bumala of Vodacom. Mm. That's why I left Paris to try and help in Bumala. Not that I wanted to sit and then enjoy salary. I love football. And I want someone else to have a life and, and travel the world like I did. Just playing the game. But you have a family. There's a saddest part. They suffer because of my love for football. And do they I understand it. now? It's hard, but they, they can see that I, I just love the game. 
do you ever think that you'll be justly rewarded in the end? And I know that, and I know that money doesn't feature with you. But do you think that at some point, somewhere, there'll be somebody who sees the worth of a Benson Amshong? Hey, guys, we're not talking about some guy who's come here for auditions, coming to play football in his... No. Like, ask any human being that understands football and knows the career of this man. The worth of this man, the leadership of this man. So if that level of treatment can be meted to him, how much more other people? And yet people keep quiet about it. So, but we hope to improve because, hey, we believe there's lots of money in the game. Where is this lots of money in the game going? Because clearly, somebody's telling people that there's lots of money. So if it's not going to a player who attracts the crowd, who makes sure that the jersey is carried with pride, people go buy that jersey with his number at the bank and his name, then who's benefiting out of all of this? For me, that is the problem is that you guys carry the can. How many football players, once they've retired, are able to go at least six months without a salary and still be okay? How difficult is that? Like, like we started, Rob, um, why can't they mention our salaries? Why do they hide them? Yes. Why do you think they hide them? Because they know what, what we've been paid is it's not what we're worth. So that is why when I talk about the insurance money, the only question I ask, how much I'm going to get so that I can plan my, my retirement. Mm. That was difficult to know the amount so I can say, do I pay this? Do I buy this? Do I invest here? So how can I sign without knowing how much I'm going to receive? So were you able to plan for your retirement? No, because I, they didn't tell me. I, that's why I came back to football and play. That's why I went to platinum just to play football. I mm. just love football. But can we ever change this, though, Benson? Because at some point, we've got to stop fooling ourselves and stop lying to the public. Because the public has got great opinions. You see, when I'm a big one day, I said to a how, how big up Benson, how petty boy, and I love to say, dog, how petty, how he up. Then they love that. Then you become a meme on Twitter, and then everybody says, yeah, these soccer players. Then they. Then they point the finger and say you've been reckless. You had money. I mean, I know times are different, but how do you improve the lot of the players? When? How do you think? Just very quickly, because we've got to go down to Durban. Another big assignment was made today. A former player of Orlando Pirates uh, going down to Usutu. So, the, hey, Amazula signing every day. They would sign you tomorrow if they knew you were available. But, <laughs> love. but just finally, just in terms of, do, do, you, do you have hope? that things might improve? Yes. Why I want to see the minister is mm. that this is our country. We, we can amend rules. That's what I believe. Right. Qatar, they've got their own rules. Mm. We can amend our own rules concerning sport. My suggestion was that 40% of our salaries must be put away. Even if you move to the next team, you only get your money after retirement which they are doing IX mm. Amsterdam. No player asks Amsterdam that you'll hear that it doesn't have money after retirement. They keep it when you retire. They invest it for you. Mm. When you retire, they give you. And you have to have a, a, a right person to invest money for you. Because when you say investment to me, what is it? I buy a house. I must pay that house for 20 years. I only play 15 years. The next five years, I can't, I can't pay it. They take it. So we just talk investment, we don't explain in details what is investment. Do you believe you've invested anything? Do you believe you've invested enough? Just between you and I. I'm a very quiet and subtle person that doesn't love to be flashy. I'm driving a 1973 BMW E3, which is older than me. Hey, but. When my mother is happy and my wife is happy and kids and my mother-in-law, I'm happy. They don't need a time for me. No one knows how much I have. The only thing I just love football. 1973? Yes. Hey, my daughter. We, we were all not here then. Yes. You're the man. So I just live life the way I should live it.
do what you have to do. I'm a footballer. I go to a field. I have kids. I come back home. I be a husband. I play with my kids. There's food I eat. Guna papa, guna share what I eat. It doesn't matter what I eat because I grew up eating papa and, and amas. Yeah. So I cannot now change and say, I can't eat this. This is on Kulisa. That made me strong for people to know me is what I was eating when I was young. So as long as everyone is happy around me, I'm happy because when I die, you won't say, this is how much is worth, so we cannot bury him in the soil. He must bury him, I don't know, in the sea with gold. No, when you die, you are nothing. Yeah, we all go back. To, we all go back uh, six foot under when I'm done. So happiness is what oh. I worth. No, absolutely. Lots of reaction that is coming through. We are an interactive show, and uh, Ben Saramshong are dropping by today to chat to us. In fact, he left everything in Pumalanga. The kids are watching. They are online, so I want to greet you because uh, Coach Ushil Wuti and Zobin Bugele today. So look after the coach. He look after you. He is a great, great man. Uh, don't allow whatever's happened in the past uh, to mess that up. Uh, let's head down to Durban. Uh, there's a very skillful player. He will dribble you until mm, Good evening and welcome to the show. Uh, good evening, Paolo. You're all chilled already, man. Congratulations on the new move. Hey, thanks, bro. It's been a long wait, you know. And I've been seeing people waiting for it more than I was, actually. Why do it's you think that's the case? But, yeah. Why do you think it's been the case? Because the, the last time we had a conversation, you were together with Anthony Lafour. We were at the stadium. It was going to be Pirates as well as Mamelodi Sundowns playing that day. And uh, already I could tell how frustrated you are. You wanted to play football that day. You weren't even on the match day squad, etc. How are you feeling now that you've got new ownership that have said what they've said to you and see your worth and your value? Uh, it, was, it was really humbling, you know, to hear what they had to say to me. And we as footballers, the only thing that we'd love to see is to see ourselves in the field of play, playing, doing what we love. So when I was in Hey, hey, hey. piano, mind you. Black Moses, All right, we'll, we'll try to get that line back up properly again. So let's just uh, put him off for now and then we'll try to get him back on. Um, we are struggling with the strength of that uh, signal. But what do you make of that? I mean, here we are last week, Abo Mela were great down to Durban. Um, Augustine uh, was also on the show last week. Umlenga, uh, then we've got now. On Mlambo, who's signing. I mean, obviously, I just mentioned the Pirates boys there. Yeah. What do you make of the new signings at Amazon? I'm happy for the boys, first of all. What, what a bunch of good human beings. Mm. As much as I'm not that old, but they respected me while I was there as a coach. So, so it's a good signing. I think they want to change the face of football in, in, in Devon. And the, the impact... Uh, they, they played the first game against, ironically, Orlando Pirates. It was 1-1. Uh, yeah, the first call, you would have seen that. I don't even know if it was a penalty. <laughs> uh, the dive, everybody was like, no, it's outside of the box. But then there was a quick consultation. Referee changes his mind, points to the spot. What did you make of that decision, firstly? The last time they told us the rule is that if the momentum takes you inside the box, it's going to be a penalty. If it takes you inside the box, yes. even if the contact was outside the box. Yes. So then, linesman, as they call him, the assistant referee, would have been correct. Yes. The referee was wrong the first time. Yes. And then the other penalty, Le Convito Macho, the second time? It is a penalty. The hand was high, mm. neck size. I am Bulari Chudole. You actually, Paul. So two good decisions that were made on the day. All right. And I know that there were glimpses of the new signings that came through. Anyone stand out for you now that we're talking to Ola, just mainly from the Amazulu side? I will always be proud of Snotemba, mm -hmm. my young boy. And I'm very proud of Memel. I handled that game very, very professionally. He didn't show any emotion. He just played his normal game. And for a young coach to, to make his team perform like that, I hope they give him time. Yeah. And I just hope it, it's all about time. 
and I, I hope it stabilized from your side, uh, Tlola. Um, I think if you just hold it like that, it should be okay, uh, because you're still giving us the background just in terms of your feeling and your settling in and the fact that um, the president of the club, Busandi Lezungu, has that faith in you and appreciating you and bringing you on. I think let's pick it up from there. Yeah, I hope it's, it's really, really humbling, you know. I mean, he's new in the fraternity, if I have to put it like that, and a very ambitious, a very risk-taking person. You, you can see from Mama signings Amazulu has made. I mean, it's a, it's a shocker for a lot of people. And for me now, when they approached me, it was humbling and... The offer that they put really, really was eye-catching for me. And I was like, I would be a fool to let such an opportunity pass by, you know. Because mm. if you have people that are willing to believe in you and trust in you, you you have to give them the benefit of the doubt as well. And you have to give your all. So that's why I took the decision, Uti, let me join the team of Usutu and come and start a new life, you know. It's always good to start from the beginning to try and go up again. When, when you say and you talk about the offer being good, it, it's a case of whatever you were getting anywhere else before then, whatever they've put forward is better. <laughs> I'm not talking about numbers, bro, but when I'm talking about the offer, it's... Mm. The intentions, the, their proposal, their intentions on how they want to see to, to go as a team, who they want to see in Stamboul fraternity as well. Mm. I mean, we saw how Maritzbeck came about last season. They did very good. And I think it would be good for the province as well to have not only one team, trying to compete at a higher level because we we all know what he, in most cases how thing has been dominant in the psl throughout mm -hmm. so it's always good to see and seek new challenges and try and make the psl more interesting and more competitive and i see there's almost like an immediate positive transformation just holistically in you how how much of an impact is this project looking for you? When you look at that bench and you see some of your former teammates, or you look at the bench and you see some youngsters, some more experienced players, you see a young coach, do you think that that will give you the impetus to bring out maybe the best of Kualam Lambo, maybe bring out the best of what we have not even been able to see? Because skillfully, that is what you have. You know, people can't take that away from you. Do you believe that? the total makeup of what they're having there, La Pogusu, to, will bring the best out of you? Uh, I definitely think so, Paro, because if I didn't, I don't think I would have taken the opportunity that was put on the table. You know, I mean, having to join Usu to, for me, it was first I had to do my investigations, I had to do my research to see what he, how well can I fit in in the team? Because at the end of the day, it's not only about me. I mean, no man is an island. And in a team sport, you definitely need team players. You definitely need team people around you so that you can succeed, you know? Mm -hmm. I myself alone can never do anything. But if I have a good people around me, surrounding me, good human beings who are willing to, to help me to improve, because... I didn't come here to Amazulu to try to prove a point or to try and fight or whatever the case may be, but I'm here to try and be a team player because that's what I know myself to be as, you know. So Usutu will definitely comes first as a family and then whatever that they will help me to produce as an individual will come as a bonus. But to see Usutu being the bigger thing that the president wants to see it to be, it's a very, very humbling and it eased the pressure out of the way. Oguti, I would come to Usutu and definitely think Oguti I'd be Goliath or David 
on the lion's den, but I'm coming to Usu to, to be a part of a family, to be part of the initiation of the whole team, to say, if I have to help the young boy to learn from the experiences that I've learned, Orlando Pirates, EFA, it's a cheaper, then that's definitely something that I have to do. And not to forget, Uguti, learning goes hand in hand. I can never want to teach and not want to learn. So for me to be able to teach, I should be willing to learn from them as well, because we we don't we don't stop learning as people, mm -hmm. you know. Or at the end of the day, if I feel Uguti, I know it all. I shouldn't be amongst other people, because Masa Aban took me less fun design so that we can go and become a bigger people at the end mm -hmm. of the day. Because what I know might help other people what other people know might help me to grow mm -hmm. as well so it's a game of learning for me sure i mean well spoken um mina sengzo and i'm going to wish you everything of the best i'm going to leave the final word and i didn't tell him this i love putting him in the deep end but i'm going to leave the final word whether it's a congratulatory word whether it's a word of advice to you from the man who's seen and done it all played at the highest level you know benson i'm going to leave the final word to him to you and then mina nge kwedu bonga mpana mtu ala ngiti sizo fi yola peti wuna kakasini sizo ojo moba ama tuumbe na yongi ndem nandi ui patega shelapo and congratulations again on the on the move over to you mr mshong kunja anba nga pilo njan coach nga raid nga raid bab nga tukela only two things na nga wa coach it's first to respect the coach as you did respect every coach that coached you. And secondly, with your boys, I need a group, at least in a, in a for many any group, the old group. The way you train is gonna rub off to the young boys. So your talking should be the correct training and helping those boys to understand what what important does training do in terms of performing. And don't forget to do your correction. If you have to get in front of and help him through Amaki Mwake. Do that for yourself because if you don't help your teammate, remember tell when you are together. If you don't help your teammate, you don't get a crowd in. So help him so that that's what we perform a crowd in. Now so what we contribute, okay? Yeah, we coach. Yeah, bonga baba and well done. Umbul selaban. Wow. That's all I can say. Well, number, thank you so much, Mbaram Daila, and thanks for blessing us here at Marawa Moments. Everything of the best, and I'm sure that we're still going to be seeing the best of you playing for Usu Tulma Peshankon. electric blankets, test, and All right, Thanks so much, Yvonne. Thank you very, very much indeed. We'll catch up with Lola uh, once he started playing a couple of games and we start to see what happens with him. But as we usher in Mamadou Gay, Sandy Lezungu, the president of the club, my goodness, he says he's got the ambition. Uh, let's uh, hear what he had to say previously, though, on the very same issue. Absolutely, the team is underachieved by any measure or standard. A, a big brand like that has not won any um, sizable silverware since 1992. Um, you know, I don't know how many times uh, uh, it's uh, uh, peers in KZN who are uh, less decorated in terms of stature have participated in acquiring silverware, let alone other teams in Houghton who have really just dominated the space. Um, it's punched way below its weight. There's no debate about that. Yet. Um, and uh, is the target of uh, reaching top four uh, possible? It is absolutely possible. And I've actually checked with both um, Ayanda and uh, Lunga Sokela to say, guys, um, you are critical uh, cogs in this um, uh, system. You know, am I uh, smoking a pipe um, when I say we'll be in the top four? I said, no. Um, it, it, it's, a, it's a reasonable uh, target, uh, then let's achieve it. Um, it's not going to be easy, that's for sure, but it has been done elsewhere. There have been many underdogs who have gone into the league uh, single-mindedly focused on um, the surprising um, naysayers 
and they've done it. It's happened in the English uh, Premier League. It's happened even right here in South Africa uh, in the past. Um, and Usutu is a decorated team. It's, it's a strong brand uh, with um, support from myself. Um, and uh, I think it, it's not going to be impossible. A very critical for me is I'm not a coach. Um, I've never played soccer professionally. Um, I've never gone to any coaching class. Um, and I'm a businessman. And I know what it takes to transform a brand um, like Amazon to something big. And it's going to happen. Uh, but it's going to be augmented and supported by performance in the field. And uh, that task is solely um, at, the, at the pleasure of uh, the technical team and the players. And they must deliver. That's exactly what we were chatting about uh, with uh, Ben Sadamashongo there, mentioning the fact that uh, coaches deserve respect and the fact that if you want to be a president or a chairman or a CEO, that you must be a president, a chairman and a CEO. Don't try and be all of that plus a coach because you don't know anything about coaching. And Sandy Luzungu accepts that, he welcomes that, and he says, I am here. I'm a businessman. Hey, there's no interference. Good evening to you, Mama Duque. Welcome to the show. Merci beaucoup. Bonsoir. Bonsoir, monsieur. Hey, il Ben Sadam Shongo is a Robert. Welcome to Morocco. Bonsoir. Hey, that just two guys you don't know. I watch him play. Hey, you watched him? Of course, he knows. He knows. One of the best. Used to deliver. Used to. Yes. All the time. Even now in the coaching, but I still would like to really see the result from the coaching. He's cooking up something very nice there in Pumalang. And trust me on that. We, we, we've got our ears and eyes wide open there. He'll, he's going to deliver. Let's talk the African continent because by the time the year comes to an end, is there going to be a, an election, a re-election, a vacancy? What's happening? Because I, I hear that there's a huge voice that says they want Ahmed to be back in power. Is that true? Well... True or not, the matter of the fact is, uh, come November 12th, it's closed. You cannot submit again. Right. And this concerns the entire Africa. Because first of all, they have to renew or the presidency of CAF, Ahmad or somebody else. Besides Ahmad also, the presidency of CAF, you have all the position in the FIFA Council for Africa. Seven all together must be renewed also. Yeah. Then you have a couple of positions in the executive committee of CAF, mm. including the position of South Africa held by Danny Jordan. If he still want to be a member of CAF Executive Committee and the third vice president, mm. the position he occupy now, he must go out there and challenge. The amazing thing is, until now, for all those positions, people are not coming out. And you ask yourself, are they scared of something? But why aren't they coming out? Because you would know more than um, Benson and I would, because you live, you travel, you are in the halls of power up there in Cairo. Why are they not coming out? F for example, for the presidency. Uh, when Ayatu, who reigned o almost 30 years over CAF, mm. Ayatu used to declare his candidature for re-election at least one year or two before. But why are we leaving it till the last minute? Th that's now? how he was confident to win. Yeah. When you are confident, you announce early. Now, even Ahmad challenging Ayatu in 2017, mm. already four months before, 
if I remember well, it was January 2017, already President Ahmad came out to say he's going to challenge Ayatu. For Ayatu people knew already two years ago. Now, we are in a situation where the incumbent president, Ahmad Ahmad, cannot come out almost two weeks to the closure of the candidature to tell Africa if he is a candidate or not. Because we could all recall during his term, it was a lot of controversy, a lot of scandal, a lot of money issues, and uh, even accusation of sexual harassment. Africa heard all of that. FIFA heard all of that, to the point that for a very short time, the French police interrogated the CAF president. That is something never seen in the past, in the history of African football, for a European police to come and arrest you. Meanwhile, you are running African business. But did they not win in terms of that? Because if, if, if I'm correct, though, 46 of the 54 members have all said that they want him to go back into power. And I remember those arrests, even on foreign soil, that they were going after him. Did Whatever it was, whether it was a campaign, um, whatever it was, did they not succeed in terms of that? Look, in order to be a candidate, to be accepted as a candidate, to run for the CAF presidency, you need three endorsements of a country, right. three countries. We are 54. You need only three. Among those three, your own country must lead, must be there. Now, if you decide to be candidate, you have 46 or 50 countries asking you to go in. Mm. Why don't you put together three countries to submit their uh, official endorsement to you and you tell Africa you are a candidate? Because to say I back you, anybody can support. Mm. Those kind of letter of support can be written by the vice president, can be written by the president, can be written by any executive committee member, because it's a letter of just support. But an uh, endorsement must be written by the general secretary of the football association, obviously approved by the executive committee. But the official letter that goes to CAF comes from the general secretary or the CEO. Does he want it, though? Because there's one thing to be endorsed and, and put in there. Does he want the re-election? I mean, you, uh, like I say again, you, you've been both friend and foe. You've been hated by CAF. And then you've been embraced and loved by CAF. You know? So it's hot and cold for you. I don't know where it is right now. Maybe it's lukewarm. I have no idea. But from where you sit, does he want that position again? Obviously, you can see he still wants the position. But on the other side, you have to go, for example, through the ethic committee mm. of FIFA. You have also, CAF recently put up a good governance committee, which is somehow similar to the ethic committee. You must go there. They must check you if you are eligible or not, if you didn't do anything wrong into football, then they decide if you can compete or not. We remember in African election, it stopped many people from challenging. It's still going to be the case. Now, if FIFA is really very, very serious about rooting corruption out of football. We must see it in action. Mm. Infantino is running around Africa 
Eh? And uh, I can say it enslaving president of football federation in Africa. Enslaving? Enslaving them. Heban, how is, it, how is it doing that? Through Fatma Samura sitting and overseeing. And Overseen. being part of because she was the there. general secretary. Yeah, yeah but she was there since the time of the Africa Cup of Nations. The general secretary, yes, yeah. of FIFA, become the general secretary of CAF. Where have you seen that in the world? Where have you seen the general secretary of the United Nations leaving New York, coming to run a continent? Meanwhile, your duty is to run the entire oh, world. Mm. But, but, but isn't that the fault again of the continent? So why isn't the continent um, objecting to that? That's we we were talking about leadership with Benson just now. But I want you to answer this thing, that when they see it, and I could hear how unhappy they were even back then uh, in, in Cairo about her presence and her interference and so on. So what does that mean, that Africa is not capable of running their own business? That's what they are telling us. And you see, Africa is always the battleground of the rest of the world. Doesn't matter who. Those are the Asia, votes. Europe, America. You see it in politics. You see it in economy, business. You see it in sport. You see it everywhere. In order to control FIFA, you have to control Africa because mm. it's 54 votes. And the vote of Lesotho is equal to the vote of Germany. Yeah. That's why Africa became a playground. That's why when Infantino went and brought Samora, mm. Fatma, as the general secretary of uh, FIFA, all Africans were clapping hands. I say, but you don't understand the tricks. They use it during slavery time, where they will send a black men to go and catch black slaves because from far if the they see a white man coming they will run away but what does that say again benson because i think it brings us back to what we were talking about earlier um when it comes to the leadership so if at a continental level and that's why we brought mamadou in to give us an overview of where we are and what is going on then we should be worried i mean what he's saying to us now hey madam dalem now i become a bit worried about whether we are ready overall. We've had the World Cup 2010, and if we continue this way, we might never ever have a World Cup again. That's my problem. Yeah, it goes back to politics. Uh, Africa is the richest continent in the world with all the minerals. Mm. But the people that are running the country or sport, they are bought outside. Mm. So people are afraid to candidate because now COVID-19, mm. sponsors are running away, companies are running away. Mm. They cannot go and negotiate. They cannot plan or market. They rely on being pushed over. They give you Handovers. support. Yeah. They give you support in order for you to give them something back. So we are bought easily. That's part of what I was going to ask you, Mamadou, because when you talked about the FIFA Ethics Committee, the way you said it made it seem or sound or that maybe he might be found wanting. Do you think if he has to go through the ethics committee of FIFA that he'll fly? You see, because, uh, Rob, when you allow FIFA to come in your office, sit down, control the entire office for six months, duplicate, make a copy of all your sensitive documents, even access your bank account, Everything. That's what FIFA did there during those six months. Now, even before FIFA could come in, already there were so many leaks coming out of there. One of them that everybody knows, for example, and it was clear, the fact that the CAF president uh, issued air ticket paid by CAF to couple of Muslim president to go for pilgrimage in Mecca. Mm. Everybody was shocked. You, I mean, you don't take football money even if you are uh, the number one Muslim in the world to use it 
to pay ticket for president of FA. And it was shocking even many president of FA accepted. You see, all those are wrongdoing. And in any serious organization, those kind of mistake or fault, yeah. uh, it's enough to Mamadou, bend you. Mamadou, you, you, you know, I know, Benson knows. There comes a time when we have to ask the tough question. Do you believe that Ahmed should be the next president to carry on what he's carrying on? I want to say the next, was he is the current? in terms of the next office, post an election or whatever. Is he, in 2020, given all that we've seen and heard and observed, is he the right man still for this job? It's very clear that he's not the right man. At all? It's very clear. Facts are there. Of course, doesn't mean that he didn't do a good job. Mm. In some aspect, he delivered. But when you have those kind of controversy around you, and not only for Ahmad, for the entire executive committee of Ahmad. All of them should go. All of them should go. Because this is a collective sin. Mm. If you are a member of the board and they loot that company, the entire board must account. Now, when you see people that were sitting in the board, when they are in those meetings, they talk, how many times did I challenge president of EFE? I say, you people, when you are sitting there, you don't talk. Mm. When you come out of those meetings, you come now and talk. Have the courage. When you bring the mic to them, they run away. But do we have leadership now that would be ready to step into the position of president? I am ready. Who? Mama Duque? Yes. Are you campaigning now? No, I am not campaigning, but to tell you that people like me, <laughs> or people better than me, are plenty in Africa that can run CAF. Mm. We are not short of capable people. You see, and I believe that... Uh, we have to take our football very serious. Very, very serious. And we cannot continue in this kind of shenanigan. Mm. And the people that fought Ayatu were the same people making tea for Ayatu. Yeah. They were the same people. Look at it throughout the so year. Even when Ahmad won, yeah. Ahmad was with Ayatu. With the help of Ayatu, if you remember, Ahmad defeated the only country that hosted the World Cup, Danny Jordan, mm. in the executive committee, Madagascar. Is, is, he, is he taken any seriously on the continent in terms of potentially one day becoming the president of CAF, Ooh. Danny Jordan. I don't think that uh, he's got that ambition. Be he, because he led the World Cup charge 2010. He, look. But he's also gone to lose many battles on the continent where people said, okay, maybe he might not be as streetwise as uh, etc. That's why they've been, you know, knocking him and so on. So he's never ever going to feature as potentially a candidate to be president? Never. In the current system yeah. and in the current situation in South Africa. It will never happen. I say it ever and ever again. To occupy those positions, it's a national will. It's come from a united front mm. in every country. If you have SAFA not united with PSL. Don't even try to go and look outside. It's very clear everywhere in the world. If you want to be strong outside, put your own house in order. Mm. Otherwise, until today, the, not only the entire continent of Africa, mm. but the entire world will ask you one question. How come Mamadou, the only country in Africa that hosted the World Cup, 
never managed to make it into the FIFA executive committee, which is called the FIFA Council. Because in the rest of the world, be it in Asia, be it in Europe, in America, when they organize the World Cup, immediately the following day they were into the executive committee of FIFA. You know what my worry is, and I hear that, and it's a, it's, it's a very plausible argument that you're putting forward. What my worry is, uh, Benson, as we start to shut things down here, um, I, it, it worries me because he's speaking the truth. <laughs> and as he speaks this truth, it, it goes back to so many things that we've been delving with here. Is that we are seen as a, a, a continent that can be used for other people's ends. When he mentions that, yeah, okay, there's no real person who can emerge, I know he joked about himself, but then there's a threat of the control, regardless of whoever is going to be the president, that Morocco still gives a direction to say, you do this, you do that, you change this, you, th they have too much power. And I always look at young leaders, you know, I still put you in terms of leadership as, a, as a, an amongst those. And I know you love football, you love gr grassroots football, um, you want to effect change. Do you think there would be a need to have individuals like yourself enjoy platforms where you say from a footballing perspective, guys, forget this politics, you've been running this show like politicians all this time. We, the football people now, are saying, let us change so that we can get Africa into a semi-final of a World Cup, into a final of a World Cup. We can't be celebrating what Roger Miller did back in Italia. You know, time has moved on. Just give me your, your summary, just in terms of what Mabadou has shared, what you know, and basically where we might be heading to. Is it a good space? Is it a dangerous space? You, you tell me. In FIFA, they say the government must not interfere mm. with football. But as Mr. Mamadou said, United Front for you to candidate. Now, we need support from the government in terms of finance. Yeah. Sure. Now, if we don't own our own minerals, our own mines, mm. our own uh, platinum or gold is owned by Europeans, they're going to dictate for them to give us funding. Sure. Right now in Vodacom, there's no funding. Mm. Now, I wanted to ask Mr. Mzepe, do you know what happens to your money that you put for Vodacom? Those guys are suffering there. They pay from their own pockets. Minimum that you can spend if you want promotion for a company is two million. Minimum. To pay. To pay. You must pay the boys. You must pay the pass every game, the yeah. stadium. They are paying the ref. I'm there. I'm, mm. I'm, I'm hands on. And there's no even single cent that comes from South. So we cannot expect the children to even go far. He can't run his own organization. Mm. Now, if government can give us funding, companies, they've got, they've got money mm. for social responsibilities. Mm. If the government can direct companies to sponsor football, even women football, it can be done. Mm. During apartheid, there was Sassol. Because yeah. white people got capital. Yeah. They can direct companies to sponsor. For the women's game and also for Matluk Luk. Remember yes. Matluk Luk were famous yes. because of the Sassol so sponsorship. And they held them down. They went and they played in World Cups, uh, Olympics. Shakes, Olympics, there, Kenitlas, all of those guys were there. So just to, I know, to finish that, you said you wanted a meeting with the minister. MTN on its own can run Women's League. We, we are behind at that time. Yeah. So I'm done. Yeah. We need directive from the government to force the companies to sponsor the... the when our, do you want to meet the minister? As soon as possible. I am coming with you. So you both want to meet the he's minister? He's the only so person that, that can yeah. help us. I uh, back his ideas because... Yeah. Okay. I, I so on important. this platform, before, before you... Uh, all I'm saying right now, is that the two of you are calling for the minister to be accountable and to be available for a meeting. Yes. And I'm saying I agree with both of you. Thank In you. fact, we're going to make sure that the minister does come on the platform. Thank you. And you can ask the questions openly because it's about accountability. Of course. That is all it is. And that's the least he can do. A minister is not there for ceremonial purposes of cutting ribbons and shaking hands. And as they say on Twitter that... Sending the his condolences. Vision for it's what is exactly his vision for sport. Yeah. Eh? 
election is happening in South Africa, you don't see anywhere South Africa. The only country who hosted the World Cup does not see the need or understand the importance of sitting in FIFA. Mm -hmm. But when they get a seat in the United Nations, they want the entire country to celebrate. Mm -hmm. But when one South African is going to context a position in FIFA, why not even the presidency of FIFA? You don't see the politician. You don't hear the minister. Mm -hmm. Even when South Africa is bidding for serious tournament to bring here, you don't hear them. Mm -hmm. I've seen Danny alone many times running around in Africa trying to convince them to, to vote for South Africa. People tell him, hey, don't waste our time. They don't hear him at all. So meeting with the minister, Natim Tet, we're going to put out a request for you to have that meeting. Because I also just think that he has a bigger role, man. They've dealt with cricket. Yes, the borders folded today. Wonderful. Cricket needed that cricket SA nonsense to come to an end. Because they've been dragging down the sport. They've been fighting useless wars in that sport. And right now, they were all falling like dominoes over the weekend. Wonderful. Press the refresh button with cricket. Have a fully transformed team in cricket. And since our readmission back into sport, they've never won a World Cup, despite all the wealth of talent. But trust me, like you saw in Japan with the Springboks, fully transformed team, come back with the fully transformed trophy as world champions. That will happen on the day they comply with that. Minister of Sport, I know you're watching. We are on to you next. Benson, Mamadou would love an appointment. As a public appointee, as a minister, you need to listen to your sons and daughters when they want to have meetings with you. That is all the duty that you have. The other stuff is wonderful. But Benson, thank you so much for coming through, Baba. I know you've sacrificed a lot uh, to be here at the show. And also for cutting off your meeting today in Pretoria to be on the show, Mama Duque. We don't take that lightly. I hope you guys come back onto the show. If you're able to secure that meeting, we'll make sure our cameras are there to cover that. And you guys bring forward because we need to have this air of transparency. You can't be running sport underneath and then expecting people to come watch. So if you're wanting people to come watch it, we must come and watch the meetings. You can't be having meetings underneath and then people must come watch the sport. No, it doesn't work like that. If we aren't getting our pants, then we're all going to be our pants. If everything is on top, then we're great. Let's get out of here.